Good morning, coming to you live from NASDAQ's global headquarters in Lower Manhattan. Welcome to this week's edition of NASDAQ Advisory Live, which is brought to you by NASDAQ Corporate Solutions. I'm your host, Will Briganti, and joining me on today's program is Masood Gussie. Masood, good to see you. Good to see you too, Will. How are you? I'm good. It's been a while. Yes, it has. All right. So um, I'm taking the place for Alan, who usually interviews you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, but let's get started. So um, we've been told a little bit about some warnings flashing in the bond market, and I want to get your initial take on that. Yeah, so uh, we've talked about this uh, in the last couple last videos, but essentially, uh, if you plot U.S. government bond yields, uh, the notes and the bonds um, from two years to 30 years, and you connect the dots, essentially you get what's called the yield curve. And the sh shape of the yield curve tells a lot about the state of the economy and mm -hmm. what investors um, are thinking. And essentially, if you look at the spread or the difference between five-year bonds, or notes, I should say, and 30-year thir U.S. government bonds, um, it's been narrowing. It's less than 100 basis points, so less than 1%. And this is the lowest we've seen since um, December uh, 2007 before the financial crisis. Mm -hmm. um, if we look at the break-even rate, which is the difference between the 10-year difference between nominal rates and real rates, um, that has also been coming down. So what does this all mean? Um, essentially, rates are going up. The Fed has been hiking rates over the last um, year and a half. Um, and they're signaling that they're going to continue to hike rates. Um, and the fact that the yield curve is flattening and the 30-year bond yields are, co are, are coming down implies that uh, growth and inflation expectations um, are coming down, uh, essentially meaning that uh, the bond markets are not validating a strong growth narrative. Mm -hmm. On the flip side, the equity markets are hitting new highs, um, and uh, they're probably caution is warranted in the equity markets because there's a lot of uh, there's a lack of hard data follow through to sustain the current um, rally in equity markets sure so in a nutshell what that means is the bond markets are flashing um, warning signals um, as in growth and inflation prospects are coming down whereas the equity markets continue to rally and there's a lot of optimism baked in to the equity markets okay Masood thank you for that so speaking of stock market returns obviously we're seeing the tech sector uh, which is aggressively outperforming this year. Yep. Uh, do you have any comment on that? Yeah, so um, if we look at the S&P 500 returns, which is up around 8%, um, over 40% of that can be explained by a few tech names, so-called the uh, FANG names. And if right. we look at yeah. the U.S. technology index back during the dot-com bubble, the uh, PE, the forward earnings estimate, was right. around 60 times, uh, and this they were offering very little income. If you look at the current um, U.S. Uh, MSCI technology index, uh, it the forward PE is around 19.3 uh, times, and profits are estimated to grow 30 percent. Um, and we saw seven years of underperformance in the um, relative underperformance in the um, technology sector over the last few years. Um, so from uh, one way to look at this and interpret this is that the technology sector is undervalued and there's still a lot more room for, um, uh, for these stocks to rally. Mm -hmm. So don't be surprised if we continue to see the technology um, sector underperform, uh, sorry, overperform. Over yeah. um, switching gears, um, AQR Capital Management, yeah. which is a uh, pretty famous quant fund, they did an analysis and uh, starting from 1994, they looked at all the rallies. And basically their conclusion is usually a lot of these rallies are explained by a handful of uh, big names, big stocks, mm -hmm. and this time it is the technology sector's turn uh, to drive market returns. Great. So obviously keep the eye on technology and see what happens. Um, all right. So how have other sector how have other sectors performed? And I know you specialize in looking at the utilities industry. So um, what's going on with that? Yeah. So if you look at these, taking a step back, broad uh, market uh, Nasdaq, which is mostly you know heavily leaning toward technology names, is up 15 percent on the year. S and P 500 and Dow Jones is up in and around eight nine percent. Small cap index, small mid cap uh, Russell 2000 is up around three percent. Outperformers are again technology names, healthcare names. Underperformers are um, energy and telecom. Uh, oil prices uh, are down, I think, over 20% uh, in the first half. Uh, so energy sector is taking a heavy beating. Uh, and zeroing in on sort of the utility sector, which doesn't get a lot of attention right. um, only because it's 3% of the market. The weighting is relatively low, uh, but it has a lot to tell. It is a bond proxy, and the fact that it's up 11%, again, it's a bond proxy and also a defensive sector. Mm -hmm. The fact that it's up 11% means that investors are hedging their risks. 
um, and buying into defensives um, and also the fact that the Treasury yields have come down has also helped to push uh, utilities higher. Great. Well, it'll be interesting to see if that moves uh, in the new interest rate environment. So we'll have to, I, ha I have to ask you that question in a couple of months. Definitely. Um, so a quick follow-up. The Wall Street Journal came out uh, today with a story, an interesting story that we both noted on share buybacks. Do you want to give us a quick overview of that? Yes, yeah, so over the last few years, uh, we had low debt and anemic growth, so companies were incentivized to buy back debt in order to uh, push up their EPS. Uh, so we had a period in which share buybacks were accelerated um, and trending upward. Uh, the new data that came out for Q1 showed that uh, share buyback is slowing. A um, couple of reasons. One, uh, growth prospects are improving. Um, secondly, despite the fact that um, firms still have a lot of cash on their balance sheet, uh, perhaps they're just exhausted with share buybacks. Sure. Uh, so, so those are the two reasons that are given, but the main takeaway there is that share buyback has slowed in the first quarter. Right. All right. And Masood, final question. Uh, anything that we should be looking at from a policy standpoint going into next week? So Paul Ryan on Tuesday um, spoke uh, about tax cuts. Mm -hmm. One, uh, again, um, the investors, I think, have been you know, paying a lot of focus on this. Sure. And he As part of the broader tax reform initiative. Right? Correct. Yeah. So uh, I think there's, uh, he gave investors some hope, uh, hope in the sense that he said he would like to tackle. Uh, he is confident that he can tackle uh, taxes for once and for all, mm -hmm. um, and that by 2017, by year's end, uh, hopefully Congress should be able to pass a comprehensive tax package in order to cut taxes, uh, streamline it, uh, uh, drop the brackets from seven to three, mm -hmm. um, eliminate <coughs> a few taxes, um, and, and he said he used the words uh, of streamlining to the point that we can um, essentially file with a single postcard or something oh, yeah, along sure. those lines. Right, of course. Um, so expect to see some, uh, hopefully, some tax cuts in 2017, which should provide a lot of ammunition for the markets. Great. All right. Well, Masood, thank you very much for your insight today. Thank you, Will. I appreciate you being here. And for all of our viewers uh, from the investor relations community and elsewhere, if you're looking for more information uh, from Masood's team at NASDAQ Advisory Services, be sure to check out our corporate blog which is located at uh, business.nasdaq.com. And you can always follow the team uh, over at Twitter, uh, and that's at My Corporate Solutions. Uh, thanks so much for joining us, and we look forward to seeing you back here next week. Thank you.